Hey, Vino, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Hi, what's up? Yeah, so what did uh, you want to talk about again? I'd previously seen um, one of your uh, YouTube videos. You essentially talked to a um, young gentleman about Advaita Vedanta. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in that, you essentially make the claim that it's one mind, one mind, or something like that. But um, mm -hmm. I, I want to come on here to essentially convince you that it's actually an intellectually rigorous and evidence-based tradition. So okay, um, go ahead. I'll, give you, I'll give you my um, my take on it. Mm -hmm. It looks like the stream is playing in another tab, so I'll close that. So if you want to reduce Advaita to a single sort of idea, what, what it all is, is that objects depend on the subject. So the objects of awareness depend on awareness. Dependent existence implies unreality. Therefore, objects are nothing but the subject. So the objects of awareness depend on awareness. Therefore, the objects of awareness are nothing but awareness. There never was and never will be any duality between subject and object. So this is what and I this is, and this is, uh, in your opinion, this is rigorous. This has scientific rigor behind it. This is scientifically rigorous, not in the sense of. So it's scientifically rigorous. But it's a different type of science that you would see in physics or chemistry. If you look at physics or chemistry, those are objective science. So I think we should first establish, because from what I remember of your comment, you said you wish to you wish to establish that Advaita philosophy is scientifically rigorous, and I thought that you meant science in the way that I understand it. Yeah. So, so science, maybe we should establish testable. Maybe right? we should establish what our definition of science is first before sure. we proceed. Sure. What do you mean by it? Science is something that is testable. That's that's an important part of science. Now, what you, what we see now is a hard problem of consciousness, right? People are trying to understand what consciousness. Hold on, is. hold on, hold on. Go ahead. When you say science is something that is testable, I I'll tell you what I mean by science. Mm -hmm. The scientific method is that something needs to be observable, mm -hmm. describable, and it needs to be peer reviewed, and then the conclusion needs to be accepted in order for like you know we yeah, observe I, I something. I agree with that. We observe something. We experiment with it. And then that experimentation is verified by multiple sources. And then we establish that this is a working model upon which we can base our conclusions about reality. Do you agree? I agree. I actually have a background cool. in science. Yeah. Cool. Great. So here's the thing, right? You study gravity, you study DNA. Those things are objects in the natural world. But how do you study awareness? Because what is the proof of awareness? The only proof of awareness, some people call it consciousness, but I want to be careful with my words here. The only proof of awareness is awareness itself. This is a good point that Sam Harris makes in his article in the New York Times titled The Vanishing Self and also in his book, Waking Up, right? There's no way that you can actually prove consciousness as an object. It can only be something that is subjectively proven. The only proof of consciousness mm -hmm. is consciousness itself. So that's something that makes studies of awareness very tricky. If you're trying to approach mm -hmm. it in the same way you would, you would approach, you know, a study of DNA or a study of animals, for example, which, you know, multiple people can... can sort of, I guess the, the verification process is, is a little different, but there's nothing that stops it from being scientific, given that the no, see, that's the problem. If you, yeah. if you are looking at reality and saying that, are you like, if I'm just trying to make sure I understood what you had said previously, sure, yeah, yeah. if you look at something or you observe something and you find it to be real, then the realness of that thing depends on your observation. Um, are, are you stating your belief? Or are you um, yours? That? Yours is this yours? So it's important to define what you mean by observation, because observation can be taken as the body mind observing something, or it can be taken as something as an object of awareness. So that's the thing, right? So you had said that you had said that the object of awareness is the only object. No, 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 no. So I had said the objects of awareness depend on awareness, and they have no independent existence outside of awareness. If you claim that they do, it's almost like something that can never be verified by yourself. You, that's why we re rely on verification of other people, right? Ah, that so is how scientific method works. So that's the thing, right? This is where it kind of goes into, a, in, into the point where you can't actually know other people are conscious. 
you can you think I'm in the world with that assumption, right? Because obviously bio, you don't want to go around hurting. Bio, people. bio. I, I'll just call you bio. Your name is too long. Uh, do <laughs> yeah, you think? Yeah, do you think? Do you think I'm conscious? I think that you are for the purposes of transaction, but I know that I can never know that you are conscious. There's a difference there. So, huh. so I'm not claiming. <clears throat> I'm not claiming 100% certainty that you are conscious either. But to whatever degree I am certain that you are conscious, it's something we can work on top of, right? We can work. We can have this conversation. Exactly. I can assume yeah. that you're conscious. You can assume that I'm conscious and it works. It works. That's true. Correct? That's so, true. It has so, a transactional so for me, in some sense. So when, I say, so when I say that an object's existence does not solely depend upon my observation of it, that's something I'm okay with. Sure, sure. You can be okay with it. I mean, I thought we were kind of here to see what we could prove to ourselves. No, no. I'm saying if you are setting out with the intention of knowing for 100% sure if uh, reality is real, I accept right away that we can't. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I cool. thought you were a materialist. But what? I thought you were a materialist. materialist I am, but I'm not, I'm not someone who claims absolute knowledge. Okay, because the materialists would say that the waking world, in the way, in the way the Vedanta, they would call it uh, Shrishti Drishti Vada. So a Vada is just a doctrine. Shrishti Drishti Vada means that the world exists and then you kind of awaken and see it. So that's sort of... I'm saying that whatever we understand by materialism works. And there does not seem to be a necessity to... Like the, the necessity to question it only arises when it fails to account for something and it has failed to account for things in the past but every time we have found that there was a kind of sort of material physical explanation for the thing i think it fails to account for the question of who am i the materialist perspective because who, the materialist see, perspective here's the thing when you when someone out. asks who am i uh, that the answer to that can go in many directions right I, if I could ask you, who are you? What will your answer be? <laughs> it depends on where we are. If we're in the, if we're in a hospital, uh, and I'm seeing patients or something, that would be a different answer to if I was in a conference. Are you a doctor? Or the Vedanta. I'm a medical student. Yes. Yeah. So if you're in a hospital and I ask you, who are you? You will say I'm a doctor. <laughs> I, I, I won't. I won't tell you the you... Nirvana Shetkam. No. <laughs> what? What? I said I won't tell you the Nirvana Shatkam of Adi Shankara. No, I won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 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 probably not what the patient is interested in right away. But you could also say you're uh, Indian. You could say that you're American. Or, I mean, whatever your local, your whatever your geopolitical identity. That is. would be like a temporary uh, answer to make just for that transaction. Yeah. So my point is, that's my point not is the absolute sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my point is, is there even an absolutely true answer? That's How do what we know we there find is? Out. That's what we want to find yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. That's what the exactly. Vedanta is. It's an investigation. It's not. It's not. It like is a, no. It seems like. System. It seems like Advaita Vedanta is based on the claim that a there is an absolute answer and b it can be found. Because think about it. When do you ever experience something outside of awareness? Does awareness ever stop? No, it doesn't. But again, exactly. I told you. I exactly. told you the things that I cannot observe do not uh, it's not as if they do not exist you other people see. can observe them i guess and also a... we can discover things and discover their age for example the earliest light in the universe ah, was not being observed by any of us so and yet when we something. when we examine that part of the universe we find that it has that age uh, let me tell you something this this sort of leads into the conversation of the relative realities of the waking and the dream worlds. This is something that you'll find in the Mandukya Karika. Um, the what? Kar the Mandukya Karika. So one of the most... The what? The Mandukya Karika. Mandukya so Upanishad? Of, so, so the Mandukya Upanishad is 12 mantras. Those are from the Atharva Veda. Yeah. That is the original 12 mantras written by a Rishi, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's also Mandukya Karika, which is written by Gaudapada Acharya, who is Adi Shankara's guru's guru. So Adi Shankara's guru was Govindapada, and Govindapada's guru is Gaudapada. Got it. He is a big proponent of the Ajatavada doctrine. 
okay ajata so get means to, get non- ajata means unborn get to the yeah, part yeah, yeah. get to the part where you explaining what it is there's no real sense that we can claim that the waking world is more real than the dream world this is a central theme of the mandukya karika well i guess that depends on what you mean by real right if i'm that's dreaming true. and that's in the true. dream <laughs> if i'm dreaming and in the dream i have gone without food for 30 days and uh, i am awake and i go without food for 30 days there's a distinct difference in the kind of conditions i will find myself in that's within the waking world though the thing the thing that you have to notice is that waking world experiences objects play, people places and things are completely negated as soon as you enter the dream world and vice versa any sense no. of continuity if i here, here, my, my waking my body is a, my body is a product of the waking world right your waking world body is yes yeah and when i don't have my waking world body there is no dream to be had because my the ability to dream depends on my body going to sleep but you can only make that claim from the waking world when you're in the dream world there's no conception of a waking body you are actually not you're actually not going anywhere your body is falling asleep your brain is seeing some images then you're waking up your reality remains material you experience something of uh, some residual memory or whatever dreams are i think there is lack of clarity there also while you're asleep but it's not a world there is no consistency in that world it's not like you had But a dream today and tomorrow when you go to sleep you will you will be exactly 24 hours in the future you so might not even be in the same world this is an ex- this is an exact objection raised in the manduki karika the continuity of dream of of waking mm-hmm. is due to memory you can have that same continuity in a dream like you can have uh, even in my own experience i've been in a dream my parents look completely different i'm not lucid mm-hmm. dreaming in that instance so i actually mm-hmm. believe this is what my mother has always looked like and that's yeah. until i wake up and you're able to do that because your body exists if you know your body saying, did not exist it, it, like if my mother my point is yeah. my point is your dream experience your dream world depends on your body existing but your but the real world does not depend on your dream because if you are if you are not observing it other people would be able to observe it if nobody was observing it it could be discovered later on and found to have a certain age so it seems like the real world is you know primary see the the problem i have with that is that you cannot actually prove that other people are watching you sleep because you cannot no their first person experience like a lot of the times when i've which is why we ask them which is why we are, i told you i am not claiming that i have 100% certainty but for the most part if i wake up and i find that i am unsure about whether i was asleep i could ask someone and they could tell me if i am unsure about their account i could verify that account from five other people who are watching i don't I know see. why i would be sleeping Couldn't with five people also do that <laughs> <laughs> but maybe i'm a live streamer who does sleep streams maybe maybe, maybe, maybe you're on an is, airplane maybe you're on an airplane maybe but on an airplane yeah 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 you can do the same thing in the dream world who will you verify it from from the dream characters appearing in the dream no they uh, like listen in the dream world it is equally likely that they will say that you're not dreaming and that you're dreaming I'm sorry I didn't I didn't ca- quite get that. the kind of the kind of reliability the real world has on account of memory the dream world cannot promise what do you mean by it is, po- yeah. it is okay here's the thing suppose yeah. you're dreaming mm-hmm. and you wake up inside a dream from a sleep that was happening inside the dream yeah I've, that's Correct? a very freaky uh, experience i've had that yeah yeah i know i know i i had dreams within dreams within dreams it's very freaky yeah. but the point is suppose yeah. you wake up suppose you wake up and you have a person sitting there and you say hey uh, how long was i asleep they will give you one answer do you think it is the mostly like it, it, do you think it is the most likely outcome that the five people who were watching you sleep while you were dreaming will give you consistent answers are you talking about in the waking world or in the the dream the no within the dream see the thing is is that is i guess the dream world I, i'm not sure where you're really going with that question i mean they they could i'm saying the kind of i'm going to i'm going to where right? I, i'm going to whatever i mentioned previously yeah. the kind of reliability you can get from the real world you cannot from the dream world and that is why it it makes more sense at least to this guy 
that the re- the waking world is primary and the dream world is something that relies on it ah uh, so you're saying basically the regularity of other people's opinions in the waking world is is evidence that the waking world is more real the regularity than- of other people's opinions the regularity of observational data like you know we observe certain physical laws here and we find that we test those laws elsewhere they work sure. that's also something But we got from the science all that is about the laws of that respective world that doesn't tell you about the reality of that world the dream world operates i don't as- understand the difference what is the difference between laws of the physical world and the reality of the physical world i'm talking about like ontology versus the physical laws that govern that world ontology is like the level of reality right because we're essentially claiming my claim is that the level of ontology of the waking world is the same level of ontology of as the dream world and advaita vedanta the term of the vyavaharika re- level of reality uh, mm-hmm. are you familiar with that phrase i'm not sure no nope. vyavaharika is like this transactional world of right now so this kind of also relates to when you were speaking to that young gentleman saying um are you talking to yourself So that mm-hmm. would not be true in the vyavaharika state. But again, remember what I said in the beginning. The objects of awareness are nothing but awareness. That's the paramarthika state. That's No, the, that part I already awareness. disagreed with. The objects of awareness are uh, what was it? The objects of awareness are nothing but awareness. Nothing but awareness. That's the part I disagree with. I think there is something more to them. Awareness is our understanding of them. Yeah, but let me come back to the uh, dream thing again. Okay. That's the ontological level that I'm talking about when I say that the rules are different than the level of reality. So when you say that the is there any way to is there any way to note down these rules? What do you mean by note down? Like we can observe physical reality and we can note down the rules with which it works. Okay. The rules of the dream world, is there any way to note it down and have it be consistent the way physical reality is? See, the thing is is that consistency is purely a function of memory. That's another thing. Okay. I so so here's the thing. We have kind of hit a wall here and I don't know how to get through to you beyond that because it seems like if you are willing to dis I'm not I'm using the word discard kind of sort of apprehensively. If you're willing to discard physical reality on account of the fact that memory itself cannot be trusted, then uh, I don't think you will even be able to commit to the fact that we are having a conversation right now. Is that correct? I cannot prove to myself that the last 5 minutes actually happened. <laughs> exactly. This and is why I think that and I think people, yeah go ahead. And I think that to whatever degree I am able to assess reality and understand it to whatever extent I can say I can prove these last few minutes happened because I will have a recording of it obviously. Same uh, thing in a dream world you would have a recording or journaling of things that putatively happened. Yeah, so here's the thing. If I and you have a conversation <clears throat> and I have a recording of it and then that recording is produced and we see that things happened exactly how we remember them we have two things that we can compare and like if if we had a conversation and then i looked at the recording and it turns out we were talking about looney tunes that would make me wonder if i am dreaming but the fact that i remember it this way and the recording shows it this way is evidence that this really happened but that regularity is also possible in a dream no i mean it you can have certain dreams but you cannot say it about dreams consistently what do you, what do you mean by consistently again cons- there's only the present experience there's no consistently no no there is there is other things right listen if there was a way to record your dreams and you had a recording of your dream and you woke up and you remembered the dream a certain I'm way and in the you waking woke- world now you just said wake up i'm talking about within the dream Okay so let me put it this way are you kind of sort of going into the territory where you're saying that this waking world may just be another kind of dream so here's a very you're exactly correct this is why godapada in his mandukya kadiga does not use two different words for waking and dream he just says there is dream and there is sleep ha so that seems like philosophical speculation to me we have kind of sort of it is so, possible to come up with theories like this about reality and there are many there's also solipsism point. what it's grounded in evidence is my point so so my point i mean you don't have to believe what evidence is it grounded in what evidence like for example the fact that what we are experiencing right now is a dream state is that what you're saying is provable grounded in evidence it's not a dream state but you cannot call say that this is more real than a dream any more real I'm, than I'm your telling dream. you from a subjective I, I point of view, 
Remember, everything is that. that's from a subjective point of view. Bio, bio. I told you earlier yeah. that a lot of it would depend on our definition of real. And mm-hmm. the way I'm defining real is that my memory and the observations we have made about this world and the conclusions we reach on the basis of those observations are consistent with each other. And that is not something I can say about the dream world. Therefore, I conclude. Therefore, I define this world as more real than the dream world. So real is something that's in the way that defined as unchanging and always present. So eternal and unchanging. The only thing that yeah, so, the criteria is so, so we, we kind of reach back at our earliest point. Go ahead. Where, yeah. where this whatever level of consistency I have is sufficient for me, and I'm happy to call it real on the basis of that. This eternal uh, consistency. I don't even know on what basis, like whenever the Mandukya Upanishad was written, whenever the Mandukya other thing was written, I don't yeah. know on the basis of what they reached the conclusion that there could be some kind of eternal, unchanging reality. No, no, no. A, that's on the basis I don't know of, it can. Sorry? That's on the basis of the fact that you're aware of waking, dreaming, and deep sleeping. Those things come and go. That waking body mind, the dream body mind, deep sleep, nothingness come and go. But to whom do they come and go? They come and go to you. So you cannot be it, any they of come and go. Yeah, they come and go to me. Exactly. That is beside the point anyway. Like, you know, I am the one who's experiencing the real world. And sometimes I go to sleep and I experience some dreams. Exactly. You're, you're when I wake up, world. When, I, when I return from the dream world, I come back to the same world that I left. So you, you in mentioned the dream it, world, if not... I go back, I don't go back to the same world I left. You mentioned something, but you kind of just skipped over it. Let me go back okay. to what you just said. Wait, wait, wait. What did I skip over? You just said I go I the, the waking world goes away and you enter the dream world. The entire body mind in the waking world goes away. This body I, that you we, say is yourself. I, we kind of we kind of went over this already. I think we are going in circles now. Because I agree that my consciousness goes away when I enter the dream world. But when I come back, I come back to the same world that I left and there are people who can verify that I had left it. And I was in this sleeping slate for that very, that that duration of time. So the consistency isn't just limited to me coming back to well, the same world. It is also on the basis of... It's also could be... Me- it's just memory. That you, memory is the only way you could possibly prove or that's a, your, that's your only source of knowledge as far as consciousness. I don't have memory of... Like, listen, if I fall asleep for eight hours and I leave a camera on me to record the fact that I was sleeping... And I also attach my brain to monitor my sleep behavior, REM sleep, REM sleep, whatever there is. I'm not the doctor you are. Uh, Then I have a record of the fact that my physical body was here. I have uh, documented evidence that my brain was working in certain way. I have knowledge of how sleep works to which I can compare those notes. So the consistency is all over the place. And if there was someone watching me, then that also adds to it. The thing is, is you, all those cameras are being set up in the waking world. That's only after you wake up. I agree with you, right? I'm, I'm aware of all these different brain waves. I'm sure you are, yeah. That's only within the waking world. And this is a very subtle point, right? This is only after you wake up can you say, oh, I was dreaming. But while you're in the dream, there's no sense that there's a waking world. All of those cameras, everything, they just are not in awareness. There's no way you can say that those actually exist. I you. agree, but they're not in my awareness. But my awareness can but fill the gaps that are... What else awareness is there, right? From your direct knowledge. My awareness can fill the gaps that are in it when it wakes up using the data from those devices and those people and those observations. Well, that's your mind filling in the gaps. Yeah, and the, it's not just mind my mind awareness. coming up with a story. My mind is comparing it also to the things that I know about reality. Like my memory and my uh, my recordings, they are consistent with each other. That is how I know that it's real. Well, that's how you believe anyway, it. But... Bio, bio. I, I think we are going in circles, but this has been a fascinating conversation. Thank you. Can I move on to someone else? Sure. I, I just want to close with one thing. Um, okay. You mentioned that you, you don't um, see where Sam Harris has you know talked about science and Advaita Vedanta and Buddhism. Are you okay if I link some articles in, in, the, in the YouTube channel? Oh, yeah, that conversation happened a number of uh, months ago, right? I kind of found it, yeah. There's also a great teacher on Advaita, Swami, Swami Sarvapriyananda, who talked with Sam Harris and they have a fascinating conversation. And well, uh, David you can Hoffman, send me a link. You can send me a link, and I'll watch it. Uh, my email address is vimo at vimo.in. 
Yeah, and my goal here was not really to convert you. <laughs> so I, know, I understand that. I understand that. It's I just okay. wanted to have a conversation to really drive sure. home the point that the way that is not just like a blind belief system. It's really something that comes out of a very thorough investigation based on our everyday experience. It's, it's an investigation of our everyday experience. That's really what the Mandukya is. Okay. My my view obviously is that Advaita is speculative philosophy that people came up with in a time when. Uh, they didn't really have access to a lot of information about the universe. And therefore, I cannot treat it as anything more than speculative philosophy. Cool? Well, I, I thought I'd kind of try to dispel the notion that it's speculative ah, I'm sure. No, no, I, you did. You did. But I'm not convinced. That's You're not point. convinced. All right. Yeah. Does that yeah. mean that I'll meet you again on here? Or <laughs> You can. You can always come back. Yeah. Do you want to come back on Saturday? I thought you said you're not free on Saturdays. That's yeah, why we're free I, I can't. I'm actually kind of flying around a, 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 over the country a little bit. Uh, so, uh, cool, cool. Mondays, you Mondays can come back next good. Wednesday. You can come back next Wednesday. Okay, okay. You are a member now, so you can. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Bye.